Lucas, I want to welcome you guys back. Thank you for joining us today. Excited to worship with you guys today. Excited, excited, excited. Come on, guys, let's get up, let's get up, let's get ready to worship God this, this evening. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, let's get ready to worship this evening. Hallelujah, how do you guys know that the victory has been won through Christ Jesus? He died on the cross, we all can have that victory. Okay, we see it. Thank you. 
for the victory that we have in you. That the victory has already been won. Thank you, Jesus, that we can go about life with assurance that we have the victory of Christ behind us. That the blood of Christ, wherever we go, is behind us. And it stands strong and firm wherever we go. Thank you, Jesus, that we can claim victory in our situations. We can claim victory in any circumstance that we're in. Whether we're going through uh, lonely times, whether we're going through sad times, whether we're happy, whether we're sad, that we have the victory. That whenever we're high or low, that God is with us. That he will never leave nor forsake us. So thank you, Jesus, for the victory that we have in you, Jesus. That we have a God who we can depend on daily. That we have a God who we can depend on day and night. That he will never leave nor forsake us. That he loves us and he will never stop loving us. Thank you, Jesus, that you can take what the enemy, enemy meant for evil and you can turn it for good. That any circumstance, any event that the enemy meant for evil in your life, that God can turn it around for your good. So thank you, Jesus, that you can take any circumstance in our life and switch it around and turn it around for the good of your promise and the good of your word. Thank you, Jesus, that we can lean on your promises daily, for they are our armor and protection that we lean on daily. Thank you, God, for today's worship, God. And bless today's Transformation Tuesday that we may be transformed by the renewing of our mind today in today's message. Thank you, God, for your speaker. May he speak from his heart, God, that he spent time with you, God, that he spent that alone time with you. May he pour out the blessings that he has received from you in his alone time with you, God. Thank you for his life. Continually bless him and continually bless this ministry. Wherever you're at, you just know that God is for you. And when God is for you, then who can be against you? Thank you, Jesus, Lord. We thank you for today. Bless your service. Bless this day. Bless this transformation Tuesday. In your mighty name, Jesus Christ, we say, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Well, I want to welcome you guys to our Transformation Tuesday. We have a special, special guest today. This guy happens to be one of my best friends in the world. I grew up with this guy. and. To see him blossom to the man he is today is, has been such a blessing. And I'm honored to introduce you to Mr. Not Little Bam, but Bam Laval. Come on, buddy. Come on in, my dog. Thank you. <laughs> Enjoy my man. Uh, so, thank you. And I just want to say thank you guys for just uh, allowing me to be here. Thank you for our room leadership team allowing me to just speak God's word for today. Uh, and whether there's three people, five, five people watching or ten people watching, uh, I believe that God's work is still prevailed to this season. Amen. Uh, funny story, Lucas was texting me earlier this week and he was like, uh, what worship song do you want uh, before uh, you speak your word? And then after praying on it, I proceeded to say, uh, follow God by Kanye West. But um, little did I know that the higher ups were not very fond of that idea. So, but it's all right. <laughs> Amen. So um, I'm really excited to get started, but before we do, uh, let's just pray. Uh, if you could just bow your head with me. Uh, Father God, Lord, I just thank you for this wonderful day, Lord. I thank you for just this time, Lord, that you've given us, Lord, uh, just, so we, uh, just so we can get to learn more about you, Lord. So, Lord, I, I just ask that you please bless this time, Lord, and may we understand, Lord, that it's not my word that, you have, that I have prepared, Lord, but your word, Lord. So, Lord, we thank you and we love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. So the title of today's word, I'm going to write it right here is up or down this is our title right here up or down uh, well, now when reading these two words as you can see these two words are opposites if you didn't skip the third grade the term opposite should be somewhat familiar to you in life there's an opposite to everything the opposite to hot is cold the opposite to win is lose the opposite to high is low the opposite to a playoff game is the dallas cowboys you see there is always an opposite to life and the term opposite, divided by Oxford's Dictionary, is diametrically, in other words, completely different, which means in all cases, an opposite cannot be somewhat similar to another whatsoever. Uh, putting this in perspective, rappers Kendrick Lamar and J. Cole probably can't be seen as opposites. Uh, even though they sound different, even though they are different, they probably can't be seen as opposites due to the fact that they operate under the same genre as rap. However, the classical composer Wolfgang Mozart and the grunge band Nirvana could probably be seen as opposites. We see that Wolfgang Mozart deals with lightly played violas, lightly played piano, 6-8 time, handwritten music, while the grunge man Nirvana deals with flaming guitar solos, blazing amps, and all that. You see, opposite means totally different, not somewhat different, not a little bit different, but entirely different. So this leads us back to our title, Up or Down. Up and down are total opposites. In life, these two can bring you into two different directions. 
up or down, life or death. We can either live at the top or we can either live at the bottom. The only question that remains today is which one do you choose? Let's talk about that. So what does living quote unquote down mean? Does that mean that you're sad? Does that mean that you're just not living in the right place? Like what does living down mean? Well, this leads me to our first bullet point today. Um, if you feel like you want to take notes or take screenshots, or not screenshots because I'm not writing it, but whatever you want to do to just uh, remember these, uh, feel free to do it. So our first point today is living down prevents you from reaching your true potential. Living down prevents you from reaching your true potential. In the world of sports, many players are given a draft grade or a prospect ranking before the draft to portray to the public how good these players actually are. Uh, in the 2013 NBA draft, uh, one of 60 of these players went by the name of Anthony Bennett, coming out of our very old UNLV. Uh, he came out of college with a 94 rating out of 100, which is a very good score. Putting this in perspective, Steph Curry coming out of Davidson had a 92 rating out of 100, which really puts things in perspective that this Anthony Bennett was projected to be somewhat better than Stephen Curry. The question is, how come we've never heard of him? He was projected to be the next Larry Johnson, Zion Williamson, before he was Zion Williamson, and many Shaq he could have said. But we've never heard of this guy once. Why is that? Well, he wasn't living to his full potential. Coming into the league, he was out of shape for NBA play. He struggled to change his athleticism to keep up the likes of his uh, teammates, LeBron James and Kyrie Irving. There was just points where he wasn't trying on the court, acting if it was a pickup game on a, in the park. He wasn't living his, to his full potential. Why? Because his poor work ethic. His poor work ethic essentially choked his full potential. As a Christian, having a poor ethic will result you leaving your full potential. What does having a poor ethic mean? Well, it's refusing to take opportunity of the things made available to you. We have the Bible. We have Google for Pete's sake. We have YouTube. We have sermons online. We have all these things, but sometimes we don't take advantage of it. Not because it's not available, but it's because we're lazy. It's one thing to sin without knowing any better, but it's another to sin in the back of your head knowing that you can do better than this. In Romans chapter 2, verse 12 to 13, it says, If you sin without knowing what you're doing, God takes that into account. But if you sin knowing full well what you are doing, that's a different story entirely. Merely hearing God's law is a waste of your time if you do not do what he commands. Doing not hearing is what makes the difference with God. God is telling us that living to our own potential is taking the knowledge we know and actually using it. It's one thing to know that journaling and praying every day will evidently bring you closer to God. It's one thing to actually do it. I encourage you, just do it. My next point, there are two different types of knowledge. You can write this down. Knowledge that fills and knowledge that transforms. Knowledge that fills and knowledge that transforms. Are you just going to have the knowledge that fills your head or are you just going to have the knowledge that transforms the heart? Me personally, I think a lot. I like to think a lot. I don't know if I like it, but it's just something that happens naturally. It's like when you read this right here. Shoot. When you read this right here, 2 plus 2. You know the answer is 4, right? But like when you're taking a math test, you just feel like this answer might be 7.6 for some reason. So then you go to your calculator and just type 2 plus 2 when you know the answer is 4, but today you might feel like it's a different answer. And then you get the answer is 4. That's a sense of overthinking. That's me, except with every thought that comes in my mind. I, I tend to overthink a lot of the time. I try to understand things that are just not meant to be understood. I try to understand how God made the world in seven days. I try to understand how his favor works. I try to understand a lot of these things when I really fail to seek the one who gives me the knowledge not to understand, but to transform my heart. In Colossians 3.10, God sees us to have put on a new self, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. When we let go of our old selves, when we let go of sin, when we let go of pride, of hate, depression, of lust, of all these entities that act as anchors in our lives, then truly are we closer to Him. And truly is our image alike with God's. When we look like God, when we use love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, when we use these things, when we walk in Jesus' shoes, then truly do we live a higher life in Him, an up life in Him. So what does an up life look like? Well, this leads me to our last bullet point for today. This is exactly one word, consistency. Now, what does consistency mean? Consistency, consistency excuse me, is staying the same regardless of the situation. It's one thing to praise God on Sundays. It's another to party the day before. It's one thing to read your Bible. It's another to binge watch cities. It's one thing to love your parents. It's another to hate your ex. It's one thing to respect your leaders. It's another to disrespect your parents. 
You see, living consistently is the key to living up. How do we do this? Well, journaling, praying, reading your Bible, the simple basics define whether you are living righteously or not. Simple things keep you from falling down. Oh, I'm just going to go on church on Sunday and then have fun the night before. As the greatest basketball player, uh, as the greatest basketball player ever to play the game once said, stop it, get some help. There is no in-between. You're living with God or you are against Him. There is no in-between. I'm just going to draw a little visual aid here. Um, so during World War I, we would have, pretend this is a battlefield, right? This whole space is a battlefield. You had two trenches. And inside of these trenches, this is where all the troops were. So this is where the troops would fight, would sleep, would eat. This is where both sides of the troops were. Now in between this area, you might be like, why is this blank? Why did they build trenches? Well, in between this was 250 yards of barren, wasted wasteland. Now, what was the reason why someone didn't come out of here and do something? Or why come they couldn't just go to the other side? Well, if they walked into this place, they were subject to toxic gas, mines, all on top of being a sitting duck for the other team to shoot at. They called this the no man's land. It's because no man would ever dare to step in this land because they would evidently die if they even stepped out of there. So, as we can see, this is life and this is death, per se. And there is no in-between. You can choose life or you can choose death. You can choose up or you can choose down. There is no in-between. You either play God's game or you keep your hand out of it. In Revelations 3, 15 through 16, it says, I know your deeds, you are neither cold nor hot. How I wish you were one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. God is saying there is no in-between in life. God looks for commitment. Words are empty without action. Up or down, life or death, which do you choose? If you're living in an upright, up life right now, excuse me. If you're living in God's righteousness, if you feel like you are doing good, then props to you. I'm very proud of you. I just encourage you to, in order to keep that, just stay consistent, love those around you, and overall, just be there for people. Now, if you aren't living that up life right now, if you're living down, do not worry. It's okay. We are in this together. And by recognizing our faults, repenting to Him, and overall seeking the one who changes everything, we can finally say the words of the famous 21st century poet Aubrey Graham once said, started from the bottom, now we're here. Thank you. And that's the end of my message. <laughs> Amen and amen. If you like that message from Bam, he did such an awesome job. I just want you to tap all those hearts right now and just give him some love. And right now, if you're feeling down, I'm here to tell you that there is an up. If you feel like you're stuck in the middle somewhere, you're feeling lukewarm, I need you to jump over to the spot where Jesus is. If right now you're thinking, I wasn't born a leader, how am I supposed to be a leadership? How am I, am I stuck in this area right here? There is a way. And Bam Such did a great job. And I'm here to tell you that way is Jesus. If you don't think that you're consistent enough in your education, in your family, just in life in general, if you think that you don't, you're not good enough, if you look in the mirror and you say, who am I? Or if you don't even know your identity, there is one way, and that's up, and that's with Jesus. So right now, I'm going to give you the opportunity to ask him to come into your heart so he can take you from the depths of the down and down there and down there, whatever it may be, and he can bring, uh, bring you right up to where he wants you to be. Because all of you out there, you guys are called to be leaders. You're called to be pastors. You're called to be great men and women of God. And I just want you to repeat this prayer after me. Close your eyes and bow your head. Say, Dear Jesus, thank you for coming into my heart. I ask you to be my Lord and Savior. And I thank you for dying on that cross for me. From this day forward, I will live a life according to your word. And I say this so the person sitting next to me can hear me. And I say this so that the devil can hear me. And most of all, Lord, I say this so that you can hear me. In the mighty name of Jesus, 
Amen. Father God, we just thank you, Lord God, for this Transformation Tuesday. Lord God, thank you for transforming our minds, Lord God, every single day. Lord God, there is no normal because we transform every day, Father God. And I thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the hearts, Lord God, of the youth right now. I thank you for the for the uh, for the mending that you're you're doing in relationships. I thank you, Father God, for the minds that you're changing. And I thank you, Lord God, for leading us in the right direction. Father, continue to bless each and every one of us, Lord God. Everybody in this room, Lord God, everybody that's watching right now, your parents, your teachers, your family, everybody, Lord God, you called us to be blessed. We thank you, we love you. In the mighty, matchless name of Jesus, amen, amen. Give yourselves a good round of applause. Hit the heart buttons. Man, if that was the first time you ever said that prayer, contact us at relentless um, underscore youth. Man, just let us know how, how your lives are changed. Let us know how happy and joyful you are because that's what Jesus does. And now that he's in your heart, get ready for a brand new season. Get ready with a life of love, a life with joy. Just watch how your life is going to be transformed from this point on. So with that being said, Transformation Tuesday, please tune in next Tuesday. We have a very special guest. Man, I love you. I love you. Give me some hearts. Give me some hearts. Share this all out. And remember, next week, invite a friend. Invite your mom. Invite your dad. Invite anybody. Because this word is not just for the youth. It's for everybody. Amen. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, we love you guys.